action Allah is judging its reaction <coughs> at many different levels to test the believer or those coming into belief or those whom think they have belief and these are the knowledges of awliya and external people and scholars they don't see it that way. They see everything with the external eye and events that come and go. But because of the way of light and the realities of the heavenly kingdom, the world of light, it has many, many in-depth understandings towards the imtihan that when people have dry eyes they have a dry heart. So means that when Allah take the servant into the world of light many things will begin to happen to them. One is that the sign of sincerity is the subtlety of the heart because if you're saying that your heart is Baytullah, Qalb al Mu'min Baytullah, that for us to have a heart that is the house of the Divine, because Allah can't be encompassed, but for us to understand means that that which Allah loves will be within the heart of the servant. And as a result of being within the heart of the servant, the heart is a very subtle organ. <clears throat> and Allah when He begins to describe Himself, those realities should be dressed upon those servants. When Allah describes that your Lord is in a different reality at every moment, different tajalli at every moment, means from happy, sad, all of these human experiences are based on the tajallis from Divinely Presence that play the heart like an… like a instrument. When the heart is subtle Allah can make it cry, make it laugh, make it emotional, make it up, make it down because of the subtlety of the heart. When the heart is dead it's like a rock, nothing happens. There is no subtlety in it, it become like it's dead. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And for the dead heart, very little that can be done. So means when we say by testing and imtihan is that the, those awliya and those trained by saintly souls, this was a part of their understanding. That these emotional events come throughout our life and that Allah is looking to the heart of the servant. And that's what's important to understand. That when, when people email that their family's sick, their children are sick, their loved ones are sick, they can't get job. With every emotion imagine the spectrum of people's concerns. For oneself many urgent concerns, even in the subject they'll put urgent, urgent which doesn't really work for us. But what Prophet described? about faith, Ya Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself, more than your father and your sons, your wealth and your possessions. 
But how, how is that going to be then tested or understood because it's like a doctor's office. When they've been trained by Allah, they merely can look and see what's happening. And everybody can then go back at home and understand that if we love Prophet more than we love ourselves and for ourselves every type of panic is urgent, we lose our job it's urgent, the children are sick it's urgent, life is collapsing it's urgent. But for such an event no sadness, nothing like nothing there in the heart. So it means we didn't reach there, we didn't reach to faith. Not the faith that some people think at regular masjids they think they have because Prophet described this, you have to love me more than you love yourself. If you love Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love yourself then everything that makes Prophet sad should make you immensely sad because Prophet is beyond the mountain in strength, beyond universes in strength. And everything that makes Prophet to be happy would make you ecstatic because the heart begins to vibrate at the prophetic vibration because you be with whom you love. When you love him then everything in the subtlety of that love you feel when he's sad you feel the sadness, when he's happy you feel the happiness, when he's mad you feel Divine anger. Because the heart is very soft, it's moving towards that vibration. As a result that vibration emanates upon their reality. So this is how things can be understood, this is how faith is understood. So no, Shaykh, some people just don't have an understanding of these events. They don't have to have an understanding of these events because every event in their own life is important. Even in the subject of the Maulu, they celebrate their birth and they post to everybody else, please I was just born, I must uh, send your gifts here and this is my birthday. But the celebration of Prophet holds a different value for these people and for people. So it means these are big signs of faith. Tomorrow inshaAllah we'll go into minhi wa minhum and the depth of, of, of what's happening by Prophet describing that Imam Hussain is from me and that I am from him but this is the knowledges of the world of light. People can't get there if at the first door they're still struggling to have a tear. And then we ask ourselves, why? Under normal earthly understandings any calamitous event that would happen to your best friend, to someone whom you love dearly would be shocking to you, would be horrific to you. And every anniversary of that event would be horrific to you as well because of what happened. Anytime you saw the person would be immense sadness of what has happened to their family. So it means the reason these events are so important in being tested in the Divinely Presence is because a year goes in building our faith and then Allah judging and looking to the heart to give a test. That if that which you love so dearly was affected by these events, how is it that you don't feel a sadness and that your heart doesn't shed a tear and you don't feel a vibration within your reality, then your heart must be dead like a rock. And rocks you put them in the ocean they just go down, they don't do anything. So we have to revive ourselves from that dead heart and then say that this year I have to increase my sensitivity, increase my salawats. Every time I think of my family I have to think of them in those events that I was with my family in those fields and in their battles and in their slaughterings and make it to come back to home so that it becomes something very real for us. 
so that the love becomes true and the vibration within the heart is moving closer towards that Divine Reality inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa bi siri Suratul Fatiha. Now if you listen to an outside scholar and they start saying, well this is, these, these events may be not so important, let's focus on this, let's focus on that, there's something very wrong in the belief level. They can speak perfectly, they can recite perfectly. This is for us because this is a school of understanding to understand when somebody's faith in the world of light and how high is it up there in the world of light. Because the world of form is like logic, so they use logical mind, they don't have it. So when people try to diminish the event, make it to be insignificant, this is an offense against Prophet and tomorrow night we're going to minhi or minhum and the, the degree in which when people do something bad they're doing it against Prophet and when bad was done to Prophet Allah because this is always mirroring, Allah says, they're not coming against you, they're coming against me because you're my reflection. Every hardship they come and do against you, it's not against you, it's against me Allah is describing. Now imagine inheriting that reality that everything they come to do bad is what? Is against the Muhammadan light, the reality of Prophet because you don't carry Allah in you, the most you can achieve is to carry the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad in you, inshaAllah. What do we have for any questions inshaAllah? Just the color of what color to paint their own, nobody's got the, from last night, the night before. Any emails coming in? Let me think of an email that somebody had. Oh. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do we deal with intrusive thoughts that are very negative and invasive and we just want to give up? <coughs> well, we just talked tonight that uh, there is no giving up, you have to put a fight and if you give up that means, well I'm just going to become shaitan's murid, that there's no giving up. It means not like, oh okay Allah says, okay no problem my beloved, you know, no more testing for you, you can go sit on the sideline because the game became too, too rough. There's no giving up, it's either in the game fighting against the devil or working with the devil. There's only two, two sides, there's no sideline. The, the, when they were fighting with, when Prophet was fighting, some people went into the mountain to hide. And when they came back Allah said, don't ever forgive them. They think that they can escape the battle by going and hiding and then Allah revealed that no matter where you are, if death is destined for you, we'll take you at that time. We don't need a field of battle to take you, a snake can come bite you, you'll be dead that instant. But the main gist of it, you can't escape Allah So when we're in this field to build ourselves and our reality, we can't go to the sideline. It's either you enter and join shaitan and he efface and, and diminish the person and destroy them, make it to be like they're peaceful and everything is great, yeah because you stop struggling against yourself and then slowly, slowly begin to lose your honour, lose your grace and become disgraced by Divinely standards and people will become like that, they lose their faith, they lose their… the, the three companions of humility and modesty and faith. So all of those will be stripped of the person slowly, slowly once they move towards shaitan. So the fight never ends, it's a matter of doing the salawats, making the meditation, connecting the heart 
and to continuously struggle. And every negativity that's coming is a sign of cleaning. As soon as they do their salawats they have horrific negative thoughts. Yeah of course because shaitan is right next to you. So imagine visually as soon as you make your salawats you saw the venom, one of these sort of sci-fi movies. As soon as you make salawats you think shaitan like, oh my gosh he took his tasbih I'm running. No, you become like venom that is right next to your ear. Every type of cursing and horrific words he's trying to tell the servant because they're already very close to you. So wondering why you took out a tasbih to start making your zikr and that's the fight is to you know keep yourself in wudu and a'udhu billah and keep making your salawat until your salawats become so strong and through your tafakkur become strong your light can push this shaitan away so that his whisper becomes more and more subtle because he's being pushed farther and farther away. And Allah wants then to train the servant on how to fight. How do you spiritually fight? It's not you, it has to be the madad and bringing support. How can you fight anything when you can't even help yourself? So then you have to be trained on how to bring madad. Most countries are like that. Countries can't even defend themselves, they have to call on the support of a large country and they come with all their equipment and all their, their means and everything. That's a madad. Those same people they don't believe in madad and they're making madad every day. Their existence based on madad because they call somebody else to guard and to protect them and their kingdoms. So this is the same but more intense for Allah that you have to call upon the heavenly kingdom to come and support and to help you against your fight on this earth. If you don't get that in your head then this earth will overtake the servant. And the, the kingdom on this earth which is shaitan will overtake the servant. There's no sidelines you just end up joining the satanic force. InshaAllah Allah protect us. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as What is the reality of using the kohal and should we apply kohal every day as sunnah for men? It's a sunnah you can apply as, as much as you want, nobody can say no to the, the sunnah. But it's a protection for the eyes that it take the surma, the kohal, it take away the nazar from the eyes and spiritually intensifies the gaze of the believer in which their focus to be their eyes. So when they look out there's an intense light. In these areas it's not highly recommended in the West because of the amount of negative energy and you don't want people gazing into your eyes to get their attention. We actually have to look down, so nazar bar qadam to look down. There's a hikmah in it in, in times of difficulty and in spiritual practices that it brings the focus of the eyes and the energy that's on the eyes to come out. So at times that they do it then there's a, a, a spiritual significance and an energy that comes, has a protection because this is the sunnah of Prophet against uh, sickness and harm and difficulty that comes to the eyes and uh, the sickness of the eyes. So everything that Prophet brought for us has an immense reality, immense realities. I was watching social media and uh, they asked these, these people from other madhabs, we'll call them external scholars, met with somebody and the person believed in numbers and numerology and started to ask him, so is there numerology in Islam? He said, no, absolutely not. What? The guy himself is, is not Muslim and he knows better than that guy. So what do you mean there's not uh, the understanding of numerology? Why you make 11 recitations of this surah? Why your tasbih has 99 beads? Why is the tasbih separated by 33 beads? 
why, why, why? And the guy started to confuse him and start to lie that we don't have this, we don't have that. And it just the, the interview was just embarrassing that they always find these external scholars to address these realities. But no, in Islam Prophet brought the significance of everything. Remember the king of the world of light, his knowledge is supreme. If they think they know anything is but a drop within the reality of the heart of Prophet and all of the angelic coding that is occurring. That everything on this earth like a program with numbers, we described many times that our life is a computer program and any, anyone who breaks down program and program coding is what? Is numbers. So somebody wrote through the coding of numbers software that you use on a daily basis, apps that you use on a daily basis. Why? Because Allah is showing us your life is a software, it's already been written. You can't change anything in this software. This rise from the west, this sets from the east, this like this, this like this. Means everything is coded. Only Allah can change the coding and He allows awliya to enter into the code to understand the code. But that coding has to be numeric because the supremacy of numeric numbers and the error within kalam. There's too many dots and crossings of T, means in letters there can be too many mistakes and you spell this right or wrong. Some words have maybe a couple thousand variations of spelling and pronunciations. But numeric code is a more perfected, precise and less errors. 786 is always 786. So everything, everything has a numeric code. Now if they don't know it that's up to Allah whom He wants to know. But when Allah wants to grant the servant sainthood then begins to grant the servant the reality of letters and numbers because of an angelic coding that much higher than the kalam, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam I'm very new and I wish to be a follower of Naqshbandi. How would I submit my baya? What are the requirements and rules I need to follow? Yeah, alhamdulillah, welcome to you. And you email help me at nurmuhammad.com always. And we send you the letter for the bayat, the, the link so that you can recite it and take your allegiance to the tariqah and in that letter we'll have the different practices that you can begin to embark upon. And very important that to keep your focus on this way, if you're coming through this door then focus on this door. As soon as you come in and you start to go around to the world of social media you're going to become very confused and many different variations and, and the teachings will be all different. If this teaching is what is attracted to your heart then you know become locked off from right to left and embark upon the path and its realities inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Shaykh can you please tell us more about Imam Hussain's wife who was from Jinn Nation, how, th how is that possible? She was half human, half jinn? <laughs> Salah Hadrat Shahr Banu is salam and the importance of the lineage of Imam Al Hussain is salam means that in many times the jinn nations have and the mu'min jinn nations have many close relationships with the human races. And this is why you call people genius, 
from the jinn because their closeness and proximity to certain individuals gives them knowledges from their world. Bi-idhnillah by permission of Allah that person becomes of a saintly nature. Without the permission of Allah they begin to work for shaitan. So both sides have that reality. So that's very important to understand that from Budal, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Wal Akhyar, Jinni wa Malaika are seven categories of saintly souls that Allah sends to the servant as a support. When they give their life towards heavenly realm, those supports have to come by permission of Allah in which they begin trained, guarded, protected and given knowledges and realities not from this realm. Well, what's, what's on this realm? There's nothing here. What is it somebody wants to know from, right? So every technology that coming already exists within the saintly realm and that's when we talk and you can Google our website on, on technologies and, and realities of technologies. So the phone, CD, fax machine, think of anything that we have of technologies, it came to the saints first. It exists within their realm in which Allah gave them a permission. This is from Qur'an, Allah gives the example of the ultimate dominion over this earth is what? The example of Sayyidina Sulaiman and Allah gave that dominion of these seven categories that would control even shayateen from the jinn. How? By the sunnah of Prophet by a ring and what we described before, what ring, for who ring? But that Prophet was a Prophet when Adam was between clay and water from the ancient reality of Sayyidina Muhammad a ring was given to Sayyidina Sulaiman that what? That brought the Divine authority upon the earth. As a result anything moving was subject to His authority because heavens controls the earth. So this establishes now the precedent, heavens controls the earth. So this ring of authority came down onto the earth, everything became subject to it out of fear of punishment. Anything bad would be immediately punished and chained and locked and forced into submission, everything believing then was willfully submitting. So this is the reality of that authority. And then the story in the description of Sayyidina Sulaiman's kingdom is that the people of the book and a servant of the book had more knowledge than one of the ifrit when he had made a request and we went into that whole discussion. Had Sayyidina Sulaiman used the ifrit then the precedent would have been now everybody would be using ifrit. But Allah quickly inspired the, the saint of knowledges of the book said, I'll bring it by the time you think of it. And that became then the whole reality of, of the people of the book and the most powerful book is Holy Qur'an that they can bring and have an authority over this earth by the permission of Allah So means then they have a support from the jinn kingdoms. Many have lineages within the jinn, jinn kingdoms, with, exist within their lineage. Shahbanu had a strong lineage into the jinn kingdoms and that's why Allah made that marriage with Imam Hussain that she was from the royalty of Iran and Khurasan regions. As a result of their relationship gave birth to the children of Imam Hussain which one was surviving was Sayyidina Imam Zain al Abidin From that whole firqa, from the whole line come the Imams. And that jinn relationship continued because that's the lineage from Shahrbanu. Imam Mahdi is also linked into that lineage. They're all coming from the lineage of Imam Hussain 
So means there was a reason in which Allah brought that reality and linked these kingdoms through these Ahlul Bayt in which they had immense connections and immense haqqaiqs and realities from these dimensions. So this has the immense significance. So the, the amazing is that people are waiting for Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, many Sunnis are waiting for Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam and acknowledging that but never thinking that Imam Mahdi Salaam is the grandson of Imam Hussain Salaam. However you think he's powerful, he's not more powerful than his grandfather and that he's the grandson of Imam Ali salam. So how could you be waiting for that which you don't respect and acknowledge? So means this has a significant understanding of the love for Imam Mahdi salam, it's rooted in the love for Imam Ali salam, Imam al Hasan, Imam al Hussein, and all the, the lineage of that light that brings the reality of Imam al Hussein, Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. I mean, he's the byproduct of his descendants, he comes with their madad and their support and all their haqqaiqs. And his lineage from Shahrbanu and the line of these jinn and jinn kingdoms that are associated with that reality. And then the events of Karbala, she fled the battle fields and went into I think the mountains of Al Bors or somewhere in Iran in which she ran the mountain open and she entered in. That the jinn kingdoms took her back to keep her safe from these events. Many, many things that are, are not talked about nor written about, about the reality of these kingdoms and the importance in the relationship with humanity. That humans are very weak and I think we've talked about it from the Lord of the Rings. If we thought that the humans would <coughs> defend against shayateen by just humans people would already be dead. Means Allah support the human race by these creations in which He gave much more power to them. And this becomes then the perfection of insan that when they have their genie perfection, angelic perfection and that their character is a balanced and clean character. Allah support them with many kingdoms and the reality of many kingdoms. And this is the same that's happening upon the earth is the satanic kingdom of jinn are possessing humans. And as a result of possessing the humans they wish to overtake them and control them. So we need the heavenly support and the support of those whom believe in Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad We are a weak creation in need of Allah's kingdom and when Allah loves the servant, Allah sends from His kingdom to support the servants inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of fasting on Ashura? <laughs> you just make that up. <laughs> Many realities <laughs> I would imagine that anytime Allah wants to give us an immense light, an immense blessing, ask for us not to do anything. So means that the reality of fasting in any time is that Allah wants to grant the servant based on what Allah wants to grant so that they don't have to do something. So it's not your prayers, it's not your zakah, it's not an action from you that Allah says, okay you'll be now granted these immense blessings. But what Allah actually asks is, don't do anything, means just fast for my sake, abstain from food and water for my sake. I dressed you from oceans of realities. So this always is an immense reality of, of siyam and when we fast 
for the sake of these holy days and holy nights to be dressed by realities that we don't deserve nor can we achieve them. This is purely just the gifts from Allah upon the soul of the servants, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.